Have you ever thought, why can't we just print more organs? It can't be that hard. If so, you came to the right place. In this video, we are going to provide a holistic view on 3D organ bioprinting technology, starting with differentiating bioprinting from regular 3D printing. Regular 3D printers turn digital files that contain three-dimensional data into physical objects using a variety of materials such as plastic, metal, powder, and many more. 3D printers can be used to print virtually any object. Bioprinting is a form of 3D printing involving cells and tissues. A key difference between regular 3D printing and 3D bioprinting is the material used. Bioprinters use biomaterials, living cells, and biomolecules to fabricate biological constructs that mimic and improve the functions of their counterparts in the human body. Many tissue engineering approaches have been used to build tissues that could be used in patients, including skin, bone, and blood vessels. However, while the conventional approach has been shown to be successful in building a number of tissues that may be used in a clinical setting, challenges continue to exist in building more complex tissues and whole organs. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why is this the case? Fabrication of more complex tissues and organs relies on a high density of multiple cell types to achieve the tissue or organ's full function. Limited availability of biomaterials for tissue construction and methods to deliver multiple cell types in their precise locations within the structure are challenges that have yet to be overcome. With that said, let's briefly take a look at how the job is done. 3D bioprinting typically starts with a computer-assisted process for depositing biomaterials and living cells through an automated dispensing system in order to produce a defined 3D biological structure. Different techniques are used to engineer different structures. Alongside this variety in the technology of 3D bioprinting, the selection of biomaterials is related to the application of the end product. For example, materials used in dental applications should entail prolonged biodegradation rates and high mechanical strength. Organ bioprinting has come a long way, so it is important to recognize how much progress has been made over the years. Since organ bioprinting technology is relatively new, most of the work being done in this field is at various stages of development. For complex organs such as the kidney, designs have been made and different printing methods have been developed. However, more research is required before they can be ready for implantation. Transplants are more common for simple bioprinted organs, like bladders, cartilage, and skin, as these have been developed early on due to their simple structure. Let us start by examining some of the research that took place in the 1990s. During this decade, bladders, skin, and cartilage were made and were able to be successfully implanted in patients. These tissues and organs have simple structures, which, which contribute to the success of the implant in patients. More specifically, researchers from the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine were able to create a frame of a human bladder which was coated with the cells taken from the patient. This was one of the first structures that was successfully implanted into a patient. Several decades later, bioprinting for more complex organs started, but some of them, such as the kidney, were not able to reach the implantation phase. In 2011, researchers from the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine were able to bioprint a kidney for the first time using stem cells. Stem cells are unspecialized cells meaning they do not carry out a specific function in the body. However, when called upon, they can have the potential to be any type of cell, such as brain cells, liver cells, and in this case, kidney cells. Although this professor's creation was astounding, the kidney did not survive very long. Ultimately, this research team's project acted as a stepping stone for future research. Now, if we fast forward to 2020, researchers have found a way to 3D bioprint stem cells, which allows for more kidney tissues to be available. This method allows for bioprinting of the organ to be faster, more reliable, and scales up the production process. This technology was not used in 2011 when the regular size kidney was made, as back then, 
the stem cells were taken from a patient. 3D bioprinting stem cells has been found to be especially useful for the reasons mentioned previously, but specifically when making mini kidneys rather than full-sized ones. Although these mini kidneys cannot be used for implantation, they can be effective for drug testing. Bioprinting full-size kidneys for implantation still requires more research, but this type of bioprinting technology of stem cells offers more insight into bioprinting a full-size kidney that could be transplanted in the future. Overall, the field of organ bioprinting technology has made significant advancements throughout the decades, but further research is required for the development of more complex organs. Bioprinting technology comes with certain advantages and disadvantages. One of the main advantages of bioprinting is that since the organs will be created using the patient's own cells, this reduces the chance of organ rejection by the patient. This would also greatly reduce the need for organ donors. The bioprinting of tissue models would also be an advantage of this technology as it can help to improve the discovery of new drugs. The drugs can be tested on these human tissue models early on in clinical trials to eliminate the most harmful medications, speeding up the process of developing new and effective drugs. Using tissue models would also eliminate the use of animals in drug discovery. Several disadvantages also exist for this technology. For example, ethical issues exist regarding access to this technology. This solution is expensive, so the individuals who can afford this healthcare solution would most benefit from organ bioprinting compared to the general population as a whole. Additionally, the current bioprinting process requires a lot of time, and as of now, it does not have the ability to constantly deliver the number of cells needed for multiple tissue types. To recap some of the major points discussed in this video, remember that the key difference between regular 3D printing and 3D bioprinting is the type of materials used. Organ bioprinting has come a long way. Early on in this field, we were only able to implant simple tissues and organs like cartilage and bladders. Nowadays, there have been incredible advances in research for bioprinting complex organs like kidneys. However, more research is still required before they reach the implantation stage. There are a number of advantages to this technology, including reduced organ rejection and improved drug discovery methods, along with some disadvantages concerning ethical issues and the long processing time. Overall, we hope that after watching this video, you have gained a better understanding of organ bioprinting technology. To learn more about 3D bioprinting, check out the links in the description.